Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in me, and God believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto them, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Words of comfort from the gospel according to St. John, verses 14, uh, chapter 14, verses uh, 1 through 6. And I would like to say good morning. It's still morning to everyone as we come to this somber occasion. But as we go through the process this morning, I would like to remind you that this is a celebration. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, Sister Loretta, as I call her most days, uh, uh, it, she knows uh, that this is a time, yes, tears will come, yes, we're going to cry a little bit, but celebrate the life that she lived. And how she touched so many. Amen. Following along with the program, I'm going to be obedient. Um, there's a selection first. And then we will have the Old Testament being read by Deacon Francis Ford. And the New Testament being read by Deacon Rudolph Cooks in that order.
کر کے وہاں شکار اس معاملے میں I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod, thou staff, thou comfort me. Thou I prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemy. And Lord is my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is God's blessed word for us today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading from you all uh, from 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18. But first, I want to thank the Lord for this opportunity. And believe me, it is an honor to be asked to stand for you all, God's people, and my pastor, and with you for But my deepest heart is with you. Uh, but I will do what I came to do, read the God's word. But I would not have you be ignorant, brothers, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this is this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and to, ooh, Lord, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, Comfort one another with these words. Amen. 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 Comfort one another with these words. Amen. 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 Thank you, Deacon Ford, for that. You have a seat. Uh, for that reading of the Old Testament and uh, Deacon Cooks for the reading of the New Testament. We're going to ask if Deacon Posey uh, would come now and give us our prayer of comfort. And that will be followed by remarks. Deacon Cook is going to come back. And those of you that would like to make remarks, uh, please just line up on the uh, my right, your left, and keep your remarks to two minutes or less so that we can move the program along. Deacon Cook. I'd like to say to you, good morning. God bless you. Each and every one of you today, just to think how good he is, he has allowed us to be here. I want to say to the family, God loves you. If he had not said these words, that you will always be here too. But you got to do that. Heavenly Father, we come to this place to say 
a few words to you. Lord, we know you heard and see everything we do. So we're here to do the right thing. Lord, Sister Mary is sleeping in a holy bed. She is in a place where you don't have to worry about sickness, bills, crime, or somebody disappoint you. She is in a place right now where all her troubles are open. She's home with Jesus. That's where we all want to be today. I know a lot of time when we come to church, or we come to a service, a homegoing service, we feel something is lost. But if you think about it, it's something gained. You heard words and things that you never heard and seen before. It be all because Jesus loved us. I'm going to say to each and every one of us, let God's Spirit be in you and over you at all times. Lord, we just love to hear that name, Jesus. We love to call on Jesus. When we're in trouble, when we're not in trouble, we just say, Jesus, 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 stand by me. Heavenly Father, we are looking for better days and a better place. So Heavenly Father, keep us in your own. Build your fence around us. Let us live in a holy life where every day will be sunny. And I pray today in my heart and in your heart, today is Sunday. Amen. 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 Well, good morning again. Good morning. And uh, just want to come to a remarks, but I want you all to know who's making the remarks. Old country boy from down Georgia. But that's how good God is. And he can use an old wretch like me. But I want to share to you all that meeting Reverend Marion and Sister Marion made the transition from a sinful life to a holy life, a Christian life, so easy. Because she's, she and he show love. Uh, I'll tell you all about one incident when I was diagnosed with cancer, prostate cancer. And I had to go to the hospital for uh, some type of treatment. And Sister Marion was there when I came in. And her words just comforted me and made me put my trust in the Lord. Not in that doctor, but in the Lord. And when I went in and came out today, I'm still here. And that was many years ago. But even when another cancer came on, what she had introduced me back there, I was diagnosed about four years later with a cancer of the lymph nodes gland stage four. But I thought about Sister Marion's word to me. Went through that stage four trusting in the Lord. Now, that's what God's word identified as agape love. And all of you, her family, that I don't know, I feel like I know you. Because there's no one can have that much God for love that it ain't spread to you all also. Amen. 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 And it's like with Reverend Marion. Uh, it's hard for me not to say Deacon Marion because he and I went through Deacon training together. But he taught Sundays, he taught Bible study. And he was teaching that Bible study. And when he was into the tabernacle, ooh, Lord. It, it felt so good and you got so interested in the lesson, the way he pre pre presented it. When you left, you took it with you. You meditated on it. And you'd be looking and listening. And I'm just trying to share a little bit with you because if I had a thousand tongues, I could not identify enough of the good things that Reverend Marion and Sister Marion have brought into our lives. 
went over to a home in Deacon Ford where the abandoned ladies were. Reverend Mary, he's the deacon then, and Sister Mary was out there ministering to those people. Missionary work. So God knows I love them. And believe me, she's asleep now. And when I come in this morning and first looked at it, it hit me. But I said, thank you, Lord, for the days that you allowed us to be together. And if I just want to say to you all, keep in mind the life that you shared with her. And what she showed, that love, make sure you show it to your loved ones and others that you don't even know. Got it? Make sure you show that love that she showed. Now, I've only had it with one of the sisters. <laughs> Amen. And it's there. So I know the rest of you got it too. Because I'm just a friend from Georgia. And if she gave it to me and I still got it, I know all of you got it too. So God bless you all. And this is a homegoing service. And we come to celebrate the life of Sister Mary. God bless you all. song that I sing to my gospel group say, hold on to God's unchanging hand. Yeah. And right now, Sister Myron is holding on to God's unchanging hand. But us still there here today, we need to grab his hand. Because that's a God that will take care of you in good times and bad times. Sister Myron, we love him. My wife is back there we went out and we enjoyed it. We love her. So I'm saying to the family that we loved you, Reverend Marin and Sister Marin, and we love you. So I'm saying to you, meet this God that he will not let you down. Amen. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. I must close with one other thing. My wife, who is not here, she couldn't bear to come to see Sister Mary, but she sends her love. As Helen Coach, she's the president of the missionaries, and she and Sister Mary work well together. And I left her this morning with tears running out her cheek. She just couldn't bear to come, but she wanted me to give her love to you all and let you know we live at 5258 Red Hill Drive. <laughs> Anytime you come that way, stop by. God bless you. Amen. 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 Is there someone from the family? If not, we will continue on with the program. Amen. Amen.
Brother told them, I know you ain't gonna go home now, you gonna eat. They know back then, I guess the people said, why that man is so small and he eat all as much as he do. <laughs> but I used to love to eat. I've been sick the last three months and I just don't have no appetite. But I just thank God that he gave me some appetite to keep me holding on. And I think we all need to, right, Deacon Cross, to hold on to God and change your hands. I'm going to say to Sister Mary, Lord, I hope you can hear my prayer. As she lay there in her bed saying goodbye to us down here, I know we're going to meet somewhere other than heaven. When I walk through the gate, the first one I want to see is Jesus. Amen. Then all the other people I know down here on earth say, hello, hello, <laughs> we are finally made it home. <laughs> Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. This is from Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. To the family friends of the late Sister Loretta Merriman, a beloved friend has departed from this earth for another land, a city which has foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Sister Marion, suddenly passing, has called all of us great sadness. There are many of us here today who weep because we feel like we have lost one of the best friends we have ever had. She was a true Christian whose light was like a million stars that will continue shining long after her body has disappeared from our sight through the impact she left on everyone who was blessed to have known her. She loved people and sought to help them. She loved her Lord and sought to please him. It would be hard to find someone fill the shoes she wore, but we ask God guidance as we express to her, bereaved family, the deep heartfelt sympathy that we feel in the loss in her. And finally, to the family and friends, your co-laborers are praying for you. You must also pray for time and prayer will bring you relief. Sympathetically yours, Reverend William A. Coates, Pastor. Deacon Francis and Sister Agnes Ford. Letter of condolence. Greetings, Reverend Marion and family. For over 25 years, my family and I were blessed with the friendship and love of Sister Loretta Marion. Her passing has brought great sorrow to all of us. The memories we have of her, she was a glorified woman who loved the Lord and his people. Her life was full, rich, and happy. We know now that she has gone on to a better place where there is no crying, no pain, or sorrow. Keep leaning on the Lord for comfort, now and in the days to come. May God continue blessing you. Deacon Francis and Sister Agnes D. Ford, Attiqui, Maryland. God's love is a perfect love, a caring love, a lasting love. And may you know his love and the hope that is sure to come. Thinking of you with sympathy, love, Deacon Rudolph and Sister Helen Cook, Indian Head, Maryland. Hoping prayers might ease your sorrow. And when you know there's hoping brighter days will be coming your way, and that time and the prayer of so many who care will lessen your sorrow each day. Progressive men missionary. And sympathy and friendship. And yet perhaps just knowing that there are those who care will help at least in some small way to ease the loss you bear. With much love, the Abby E. Thompson Missionary Society of Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church, Marlboro, Maryland. Dear Reverend Marion, although I'm sorry, in sympathy. Dear Reverend Marion, although no words of sympathy can ease the loss you bear, still you may find some comfort knowing others truly care. The Deacon Ministry at Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church, Deaconess Denise. G. Baker, Chairman. 
with seven feet in your lot. Brother Marion, although no words of sympathy can ease the loss you bear, still may you find some comfort in knowing of the true care. Much love, Deacon Maurice and Deaconess Denise G. Baker. The Lord is close to all who call on him. As you walk through this time of loss, may you know that the Lord walks with you and he will comfort you. Leonard and Earlene Green and family. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Ann. We will now have a selection as we prepare for the eulogy by Sister Agnes Ford. a little bit. <laughs> she was my best friend. She was in the Lord. She taught me a lot. I went down to see her, my husband and I, and ribbon coats and all of them. And like I was telling her, I, I was teasing her. She got one of these king size beds. You remember, remember her let me sleep in it. That was one of the comfortest beds I ever been in. And I was teasing her about it. We just had fun. But uh, I want y'all to understand that love, you give love and you get the love. Amen. I'm going to try to sing, he'll understand and say well done. Y'all bear with me. Amen. <laughs> Is when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior is come. Be not amazed if friends don't believe you. He'll understand and say, well done. a little bit of that, but I want y'all to hear this. If you are a witness, why don't you let God abide? If you've been converted, why don't you let God abide? If you... Y'all bear with me. I'm 80-some years old. But I still love to sing, and I know my pastor's right on my tail. <laughs> he done threw me out. <laughs> I'll give you something to laugh, laugh about. If you are a witness, why don't you let God abide? If you've been converted, why don't you let God abide? If you know that you know him, he'll walk by your side. You'll give an answer to every problem if you let God abide within your soul, within your soul. Within your soul, deep down within, oh, he'll hear your call. He'll never let you fall. You'll get an answer to every problem if you let God abide. I know I'm going to get this going. <laughs> Amen, Sister Ford. Uh, she mentioned that we, uh, Deacon Ford and I and Sister Mary, we went down to see uh, Loretta and, and Darnell uh, down in Monk's Corner. Can you imagine spending nine hours in the car with that woman? I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> in the name of Jesus. That's all, that's all I'm going to say. We have a good time. You mind if I take this off? I really can't preach and 
Uh, we have a good time. I, I pray at Pleasant Grove. Loretta uh, was a pillar uh, at Pleasant Grove before she moved down to Monk's Corner. So I had never heard of Monk's Corner, uh, but they moved down there and uh, uh, Loretta was a deaconess. Uh, she was always in the kitchen. She uh, was a missionary. She did uh, so many things in and around uh, Pleasant Grove that we sorely missed her and will sorely miss her uh, now that she is not here to love us and to chastise us. I'm gonna say something about that a little later, but uh, my name is Reverend William Coates. I am the pastor of the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Marbury, Maryland, and you've already met some of my deacons and, and with Sister Agnes, I don't know where she went. I'm gonna call her Agnes, she don't like that name, but I'm gonna call her Agnes anyway. <laughs> Um, well, bless the Lord. Um, certainly to this family, Don, uh, Reverend Marion, uh, Movina, Hugo, and family, certainly on behalf of the Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church, we bid you not only glad tidings, but we also, our heartfelt sorrow is with you in the loss of an, our dear friend. Uh, there is a word from the Lord, and um, I'm going to speak for just a few minutes from uh, the book of Job, and you can you can remain seated. Um, from the book of Job, chapter 19, uh, just two verses, or three verses, 25 through 27. And the word of God reads in Job 19, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon earth, and though after my uh, skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for thyself, for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. The word of God for the people of God, the grass withereth and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. We sometimes forget that there is a cycle or a rhythm to life. There are some things that we can control and there are some things that we have no control over whatsoever. But there are choices that we can make while we're still here on this earth that will make a huge difference in our lives and in those who love us. We come today not to mourn death, but to celebrate the life. Loretta Marion lived on this earth. She lived well. She loved well. She showed love to almost everybody she met. And I say almost because if she liked you, you knew about it. Yeah. And if, you, if she didn't like you, you knew about that too. She had an uncanny way of letting you know what was on her mind, whether you wanted to know it or not. I, 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 I want to say that uh, she was... Um, uh, how, how do you clean this up, Doc? Uh, she was she was headstrong. No, no, uh, opinion. No, not opinion. She um, she just let you know what was on her mind. You see, everyone is born into this world. We uh, one day will have to take this same road. All of us. Life is not promised uh, tomorrow to anybody. I, I like to think of, of life like marbles in a jar. And, and, and you guys remember in, in school where they had either the Jolly Ranchers or the marbles or something, and you had to guess how many were in there. You see, those marbles or those Jolly Ranchers represent a day in your life. Some of us have, you know, if you look at the jar, you say, well, there's 300 in there. Some of us have that many days left. But others of us, if we look at the jar of the the days that we have left in this world, they are less than that. So none of us really know how many days left. It's always a guessing game. But as I reflect 
on my experience with Sister Marion, and I went back and forth sometimes. Uh, I called her Sister Loretta if I wasn't in trouble, and if I was in trouble, I would call her Sister Marion. And uh, you would have to know that I also was a deacon on the deacon board, uh, and then a minister, and then uh, becoming pastor. And, and Loretta was there to uh, chastise me on one hand uh, and encourage me on the other. Sister Ford said we went down to uh, Monk's Corner to visit uh, after, shortly after they, ret uh, they retired and moved us to Monk's Corner. Uh, Loretta fell ill, and we felt that it was our responsibility to at least show her our love and our support. So there were, there were six of us. Five of us that copped in my car and we drove down and picked up Doc, uh, Reverend Marion, and we went over to the hospital. And you can imagine uh, at this time she was frail. She was small. She called us before to, to just give us a warning. She says, I, I, I don't look good, but I'm feeling better. She said, don't, don't be surprised. She, she called me. I mean, she called personally and said, look, I know you're coming tomorrow. I, I, I don't want you to be surprised by how I look. I don't look like uh, uh, what I've been through. So we get down there and we, and, 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 you know, we got into the room and, um, you know, that they were laughing and joking and uh, we, had, we had a good time. And, and somewhere, a lull in the conversation, and, and, and you know, there was a group over here on, on the side of the hospital room, and, and Sister Loretta kind of motioned to me to come to her bedside, and everybody knew I was in trouble. <laughs> so I sat down, and, and what, you know, this, this, uh, this, this young woman who, who only half of, of herself that I remember, and she pulled me in closer. You have to understand at the time at the church, we, the church was, was having going through a little turmoil in the pulpit and there were some things going on and she pulled me closer and she said, boy, do what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> I, I, I said, well, I, I tried to get, I said, Sister Loretta, Sister Mary, I'm, I'm, she's in the, she cut me off and looked at me, right, right? <laughs> do what you're supposed to be doing. And like a little child being scolded, I just kind of bowed my head and said, yes, ma'am. A couple, a couple of months, even, even two months later, I believe, that I was elected and selected as pastor. And she called me to congratulate me and said, yeah, you finally did what I told you. That God had already placed it upon your heart. I don't know why you were running. I, I said, um, and that's the kind of relationship that we had. She was direct. Um... If, uh, like I said, if uh, if there was an issue that she wanted you to know about, you knew about it. <laughs> she she wasn't mean spirited. So, I mean, she she didn't do it means. She did it in love, but you knew what was on her mind. Her mind. Yes. It's a time such as this that we feel that nobody else is going through what we're going through. Nobody, it, we feel that way. We feel this pain and we feel this loneliness that no one understands uh, what we're going through. And although this is true, that no one really knows exactly how we feel, others have experienced uh, this type of devastation, this type of personal loss of a loved one. This experience of personal loss is also recorded in God's word in the book of Job. Let me let me just tell you a few few minutes about Job. Job had it all. He had 10 children, he had fields uh, of livestock, he had abundance of land, he he a uh, house a uh, house full of servants and a substantial stack of cash. Job had it going on. And then without warning like an avalanche, like uh, adversity struck in Job's life, and he lost everything. He lost his livestock. He lost his crops. He lost the land. He lost the servants. And if, if you can believe it, he even lost all ten of his children and his children's wives, husbands. And soon thereafter, he lost his health. He experienced his own, uh, his own sea of pain, and he could therefore write from experience of his own intense inner suffering. 
But in, in the midst of his pain, in the midst of his suffering, he made that profound statement of faith and recorded there in chapter 19, verses 25 through 27, Job proclaimed, for I know that my Redeemer lives and he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, Job says, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God. Whom he said I shall see for myself. My eyes shall behold and not another. And how my heart yearns within me. Twice, twice in this passage, Job states that there are some things that he knows. Some things that he knows with certainty. First Job said, that he knows that there is a redeemer. My brothers and my sisters, I'm here to proclaim to those that don't know there is a redeemer. Amen. This is a personal statement of conviction, not, not hearsay, not speculation, but truth uttered from a heart of assurance and firm conviction. You say, Brother Preacher, well, what is a redeemer? Is it like a coupon and you can go to Macy's and redeem something from Macy's? Well, well a, a redeemer is one who purchases, one who repurchases, and who delivers us from bondage by paying a ransom. Job could have said, well, I know that my Savior lives, and he would have been accurate. He could have said that I know that my champion lives, and he would have been accurate in that also. He could have said, I know that my advocate lives, and that would have been accurate as well. But he didn't use any of those terms, but he simply said, I know my Redeemer lives. That means Job knew that there was an opportunity for him to be purchased back. You see, he knew that ultimately he belonged to God. But, but sin in Job's life and sin in our life have separated us from God. And we have to be repurchased. We have to be purchased back. And the only way we can do that is by the blood of Jesus. I believe if Sister Loretta could speak to us today. She would tell you that there's nothing more important than having a personal relationship with the Savior. Jesus is the Redeemer that Job spoke of. Christ is our Redeemer. He has repurchased us. He has delivered us from bondage by of sin, from bondage, of doing things that we know we're not supposed to be. All those things that separate us from God. He has repurchased us by his blood. The second thing that Job is certain of this morning is that the body is not permanent. After he said, after my skin has been destroyed, the apostle Paul, hundreds of years later, explained it this way. He said, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed. We have a building from God. A house not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Beyond his certainty, Job also expressed his confidence that he would see God for himself. He said, I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, that, and my eyes shall behold not another. Ah. Uh, what Sister Marion believed by faith, she now sees by sight. She no longer resides in a body racked with pain or, or a body filled with disease. She is in the presence of the Most High God at this very moment. I believe that uh, Sister Loretta can say like the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians, he said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It would be extremely selfish of us to even think that we would want her to come back to this place, come back to this. It would be selfish for us to say, Loretta, can you spend just one more moment one more, when she's on walking the streets of gold right now? Uh, this joy is having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ 
can be found in the words that Jesus said himself. In John 11, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. It's hard for us to rejoice now, but we should be rejoicing in our souls that she is in the presence of the Most High God. We should rejoice uh, that she knows God perfectly to behold the glory of his presence and to thank him for saving her and thank him for bringing her home. This is something we should all remember as the days uh, come ahead. The grief we feel, the emotions that go with that grief should draw us closer to one another and then draw us closer to Christ. You see, as the family goes through pain, that pain should draw you closer to, I pray right now that there is no discord among this family because tomorrow is not promised. You can take this uh, ill feeling, you can take this pain to your grave, but how much better would it be to just let it go and get together with your family because tomorrow it may be somebody else. The next day, it could very well be you. It was a Thursday evening on February the 25th that Loretta got a visit from one of heaven's angels. And the angel told her that her mansion on the other side was finished. And she saw a bright light. (laughs) Because the Bible says that uh, Jesus in all of his radiance shall light up the heavens. And the Lord called on home uh, to take her place in her heavenly home. Loretta received her promotion on that day, on that evening from earth to glory. And now she walks among the patriarchs of the Bible. She did not die. She simply fell asleep in the arms of Jesus. And I believe Loretta has already seen angels for the first time. I believe she's already heard the angelic choir sing Uh, from on high. She sees sights that no man has ever seen before and uh, walk on the streets of gold. Talk to the greats of the Bible but best of all, she has seen Jesus for herself. Oh, our God is awesome. He can move mountains. He can keep us in the valley and hide us from the rain. Our, Our God is awesome. He heals us when we're broken, gives us strength when we've been weak. Uh, forever he will reign. Uh, think about it. He's the savior of the whole world. Uh, and the giver of salvation. By his stripes are we healed. Uh, our God is awesome. Uh, today we can be forgiven. Uh, his grace is why I'm living. Somebody ought to praise him today because we serve a mighty good God. What an awesome God we serve. So on the day we say, Loretta, my dear, take your rest. You fought the good fight. You finished your course. You kept the faith. Now receive your reward. We will miss you, dear sister. Oh, how we love you. But we also know that God loves you best. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.
They call me God's amazing. Oh, amazing. Don't leave.